Good afternoon. I'm Gail Sylvia, and you are watching Sylvia Global. Dot com and today our special guests are Kathy Schaefe and Kay Lindahl and they are part of Women of S Women of Spirit and Faith and we will be discussing an upcoming very important event in San Francisco California called Alchemy Occupy Your S Sacred Self Kathy and Kay th thank you so much for being here with us today how are you good Good. Thanks for having us. Both of you are authors of books and um, books on topics related to women and spirituality and our sacred places and how we can lead transformative lives from that sacred space. Kathy, can you open up with sharing how you became involved with this work? Oh, I have been following this thread of women's leadership for over a decade. It was actually kicked off by 9-11 and by an awareness that the voices of women needed to be heard on this planet in order to bring balance and in order to unravel some of those knots of conflict and hatred that get acted out in the world. And um, so it began with an organization called Gather the Women and evolved um, at the Parliament of the World's Religions in 2009 in Melbourne, Australia. Um, it evolved into this new organization called Women of Spirit and Faith. When you said you began with Gather the Women, who were the women that you reached out to to gather together into the sacred space? you know, given the, the magnitude of 7, of 9-11? Well, we use the internet to broadcast a call to women, to say to women all over the world, just like your global media reaches out to women all over the world, to say to them, if you are feeling called right now to arise, to bring your leadership, to, um, to be part of a tsunami of spirit, <laughs> to heal this planet, um, respond, get engaged, and tapped into a remarkable response. Within a period of eight months, had 4,300 women from 76 countries logged into our website. Um, so what, w with just with just that gentle invitation tapped into this whole river of passion and commitment and concern out there among the world's women and, and let them then began to gather locally, began to discover opportunities for connection and co-creation and transformative action together. Mm -hmm. Kay Lindahl, uh, you are also the founder of the Listening Center. Can you talk to us about the work that you're doing? And then I want to bring that Listening Center experience and what Kathy just mentioned um, full circle to this upcoming event called Alchemy, Occupy Your Sacred Self. Great. My in interest in listening started probably about 25 years ago and when I became engaged in interfaith work and I discovered that uh, listening was an extremely important far, part of interfaith dialogue that you really needed to learn how to listen very well if you were talking to people who had such different belief systems and different ways of looking at their own spiritual lives. So about 14, 17 years ago, I think it is now, um, I really started focusing in on the listening aspect of interfaith work and started my work on the sacred art of listening because for me, uh, what, I, what I sense about listening is it really is uh, a sacred art and a spiritual practice and that the more we know how to listen to one another, the more we practice deep listening to one another, the better we'll be able to understand each other and the greater the chance for peace uh, on the planet, which is something I think we're all aware we need very much right now. So a part of what's sacred about the power of listening is being able to be still and to be quiet and you know to have moments yes. uh, where we are in a sacred mm -hmm. quiet place. Mm -hmm. So listening to that inner voice sounds like Kathy something that also happened to you that evolved into the gathering. Is that accurate? Absolutely. 
I think I think there's a cyclical nature to our spiritual lives where we go into that silence and we listen. We've talked at Women of Spirit and Faith that we're not just listening to one another, but we're listening also to the voice of spirit within each of us and to the sacred that shows up when we are in circle together as women. And so there's this cyclical nature where we go inward to listen to that voice. That voice informs us and inspires us. And then we take that and move out into the world to create, um, to, to connect, to broadcast. Um, and then to listen again and deepen and expand our understanding. Um, and, and it goes round and round. Do both of you find that uh, women who cherish and recognize the value of the, and the sacredness of being able to listen, do you find that these are generally women who have gone through some experience at some significant stage or moment in life that has force their attention to mm -hmm. a place of quietness and sacred listening? I think this is probably true. I don't know if it's a hundred percent true, but I know that for most people, for myself personally, there was something that happened that made me really pay attention to listening. Uh, and so that's how I really started uh, moving mm -hmm. forward on this journey. and. Um, and I'm not sure it's a hundred percent though. I think that that some some women just have a passion for something, and it's out of that passion that they learn how to listen for that deep inner guidance and wisdom that comes through. You know, in this generation of with with us being bombarded with so much information and so much noise um, cluttering our day to day um, mm -hmm. for our attention, it seems like it's even more important to have experiences like the one that you the two of you are creating on November 7th mm -hmm. through the 10th in Sacra in San Francisco and to be able to have a place of alchemy to occupy mm -hmm. our sacred mm -hmm. self can you talk about how this came about and why it is important and how it affects cross generationally um, mm -hmm. you know our lives I'll step into that first and, and then I'll let Kay um, chime in as well. Um, we did our first alchemy gathering about two and a half years ago in the spring of 2011. And we brought together about 150 women from all different faith traditions, women who were strongly aligned with a traditional religion, Christian, Jewish, Muslim, Sikh, um, Buddhist. Um, and also indigenous women with that earth-based Native American spirituality and women of spirit, women who are spiritual but no longer affiliated with a religious tradition, what the popular media has been calling um, the nuns, N-O-N-E-S, um, which is a fast-growing demographic of spiritual people in this country and in, in much of the Western world. And that gathering of alchemy was, um, was magical in many ways. Mm -hmm. As the women listened to one another, we watched them individually um, gain more spiritual stamina, more spiritual confidence, if you will, um, as they saw themselves sort of reflected back to themselves by their sisters, um, they grew stronger and more clear and more articulate about their passion and about what they wanted to create. And the synergy of that, of, of the individual women and the many, many, many different organizations and networks that they are affiliated with, um, was really tremendous and, and I think that a lot of things grew out of that gathering and continue to grow out of that gathering. There are ripples that continue to travel. So this is really transformational deep healing um, that's taking place not only within the individual who's there in that moment in time but resonates 
in the world and the work that they do once they leave mm -hmm. um, those gatherings to affect transformational deep healing. Would that be um, a desired, you know, an, a common outcome or a desired outcome from these experiences? I would say yes, <laughs> simply, uh, because we our, our intention is to is to hold a space for women to find themselves and to find their own passion and to find their own voices. And this is what we found had happened the first time we did this, and we've expanded that now because we see that women are still longing for the, a certain way. They're longing for something. Sometimes they can't even articulate what it is that they're longing for. And one of the things that, I, that we, we provide in this gathering is a place for people to come together and explore and discover together this longing. One of the other outcomes that I think happens in this is, is that we learn how to stand for the greatness in each other. Mm. That there's something about being with each other. We somehow, over the years, we haven't been so good about trusting one another and standing up for one another. When some, like There was a, a, an instance recently where someone said she didn't say something because she wasn't sure any other woman in the war room would stand up for her. And it was an issue to deal, deal with women. So you know, to have that sense that women aren't going to stand up for you if you say something, uh, it, that's huge. And women have a role that has, has been neglected for so long now because we had, we're half the population and we haven't been half the conversation. Are women of spirit and faith in K a part of women's empower a necessary part of women's empowerment as women support one another and step into owning our influence in the world um, roles that we play? Yes, I would think I would. I I don't use like to use the word empower so much anymore because it sounds like we are giving them something. It's more like women are rediscovering their own power, and we're providing a space in which that can happen. Um, Kay, Kathy, can you talk to us about the, the event and what's scheduled there? I know that some of the questions that you'll be working through are, you know, how to create a global alliance, you know, to amplify the faith voice of women, you know, especially at a time when the world desperately needs this, the wisdom mm -hmm. that women innately have. And... You know, can you talk to us about some of that work and um, that will happen on November seventh through the tenth? Yes, um, I think I'll start with the basics. You've already mentioned the dates, November seventh through tenth. You've already mentioned it's in San Francisco. It's at the Sofitel San Francisco Bay, which is near the San Francisco airport. Um, this gathering is going to be very different than our first gathering. We are going to have no keynote speakers. We're going to have no panels of experts at the front of the room um, with people sitting and passively receiving um, in the rest of the room. The design of this gathering is going to be completely, radically different, inviting the voices and the wisdom of literally every single person in the room. And there will be some remarkable women joining us. Naomi Tutu is going to be with us, uh, Alisa Starkweather, uh, Kathy Hearn from the New Thought Movement, Diane Longboat, an indigenous wisdom keeper from Canada, from the soul of the mother, um, Carol Lee Flinders, who is the author of many remarkable books on women and spirituality, and many, many, many more. But they won't be coming as experts to stand at the front of the room. They will be coming to be part of a community of women, coming together as equals and exploring these really important questions about how we begin not just to bring our own voices, but to amplify our voices above this, this din of fear and negativity that often dominates the popular media these days. Um, there, there's something else really important here. Um, women's leadership is a very hot topic right now. Um, we all watched the news yesterday about Janet Yellen's um, appointment as the first woman to head 
the Federal Reserve. Um, we're hearing a lot of firsts, women to lead this or that. The uh, Evangelical Lutheran Church of America has its first female bishop. And when she was interviewed um, recently on television, and someone asked her about how important was it that she was the first woman um, bishop to lead this organization. She said she really looks forward to a time mm -hmm. when it is not a remarkable thing that women lead. <laughs> um, and, and, and I think that, that as we're in this moment where women's leadership is rising, we, we want to remember that women's leadership only is different if women lead differently. Mm. If women lead with a spiritual grounding and with a spiritual root that makes their leadership compassionate, collaborative, um, focused on the sustainability of the earth, and the sacredness of the earth and of all people and of all living things. And, and if, if that is the context from which women lead, whether they're in Congress or whether they're at Fortune 500 companies or whether they're at the head of the Federal Reserve, um, then maybe there really is a chance that a wave of transformation can begin to sweep across this planet. Do you see this this type of transformation happening um, with this current generation, or are we one or two generations away from that being mm -hmm. um, a reality for um, many women, especially here in the United States? Well, what first came to my mind when you said that is Malala. Mm -hmm. I said she's sixteen. Mm -hmm. She is a model of someone who has found her voice and is speaking out. And uh, I see this a lot with the younger women. They're, they, 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 are, they are articulate in a way that, that those of us who are, are, have had more experience and been around a little bit longer did not have at the same age that they are. So my, my sense is that, that the younger women are, are ready for this. And what we hope to provide in alchemy is, is the, the nurturing, the, the support for them to actually go out and be those voices that they have, that they know they're ready to share, but they, sometimes they don't know quite how to do it. Uh, they, uh, many times in our gatherings, the younger women say they want, they want mentoring, but not in the old way of mentoring, because uh, we really, those of us who are a little bit older, find that we learn as much as, as we share with the young ones, because they're teaching us so much. Uh, but they want, they want someone to support them and to say, you know, to, to be, hold their hand or to just say they had a girl as they're going along. And so I think that's part of what we provide for the younger women. And I, I, my sense is that the younger women are ready. I am, I, I, I'm a little bit stuck on one point. Kathy, earlier you made reference to the growing number of people in the nun, the nunness category <laughs> and when it comes to... Um, the religious and faith component. You know, our society uh, has placed so much emphasis on the separation of church and politics or church and government and church um, becomes almost synonymous with spirituality. Uh, how, how do the two of you and your work and your experience mm -hmm. reconcile that and this growing number of people categorized under none or nunness, the, the nuns. Mm. Mm. Well, I think there there is a, a shift going on in the whole religious spiritual world right now. Uh, particularly, I I come from a, a, a woman of faith and a woman of spirit, really, and because I still am involved with the traditional church, I go to the Episcopal Church. I'm very involved, very active. I see change shifting there, and I'm also very much a woman of spirit because I I really experience my spirituality on a daily basis and all the time. And I think there are a lot of people like us around, like me around, uh, that are 
are both now, and and that women of faith are learning from women of spirit about the experiences, and women of spirit are learning from women of faith about practice. That that it's a practice, sometimes a deeper practice, the rootedness that women of faith have. So I think I think that that there's 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 a both and to this. It's not either or, and that there are a lot of people who are having these this sense of spiritual experiences that call themselves spiritual who are not connected with their traditional faith tradition who still can participate with women who are part of this traditional faith tradition. Kathy, do you have any thoughts on this as well? Yeah, I, I think there are a couple um, interesting points here. One of my friends, Ann Benvenuti, who was the co-chair with me and um, with Phyllis Curat of the Women's Task Force at the Parliament of the World's Religions, described that this, this name, the nuns, is not really a very accurate name. Mm -hmm. That actually a lot of these people are more like alls than nuns. Mm -hmm. They are people like me who embody spiritual practices from a number of different religions and spiritual traditions. People who see the, the oneness and the unity at the heart of all the world's religions and want to live in some ways in the cracks between those silos that define um, religions as separate from one another. Um, and I think that there are actually a lot of women in that category of the alls because they couldn't find a legitimate place mm -hmm. to stand and be recognized as valuable contributors and leaders in the churches where they, where they grew up and where, where their families were affiliated. Um, women couldn't be priests, women couldn't be um, deacons, women, women couldn't find a way to bring their leadership w where it was recognized and valued. And we see that commonality across many different religious traditions. And so there, there's a way that a lot of those women who are spiritual but no longer religious are are in those cracks between the religions because they're looking for a place to stand. They're looking for a way to bring their leadership so that it is recognized, so that it's valued, so that they can serve, um, truly serve, um, in, in a way that is equal. You know, one of the things that's that is puzzling me is it's challenging enough in contemporary times and those that have been you know before here before us leading in let's say business and politics as just examples it's challenging enough to be the minority presence whether mm -hmm. it's the minority presence in terms of political position or the minority presence in terms of ethnicity or mm -hmm. culture um, or gender mm -hmm. and now throwing or placing women as the one or the two in the boardroom or in the political mm -hmm. arena who are also wanting to approach and apply their spiritual and faith mm -hmm. strengths, how can we really support and encourage them and nurture that in such a way that they are actually inspirations for more women and men to approach leadership from this place of spirituality and mm -hmm. faith? There are some examples of women who have done this and are doing this. Uh, I, I'm not remembering the name of the company right now, but I, it's it's a um, manufacturer of clothing, and she holds all her meetings in circle. She's just, she's a powerful woman. She's I think it's Eileen Fisher, Kay. That's who it is. Oh, yes. okay. Yeah, yes. and and she has she has structured her corporation around more feminine principles of leadership. 
Uh, so there are some models out there. It's it's not always easy. This is some of our younger women. This is the question they come to us with. You know, how do I bring what I know my spirit is telling me to the workplace that doesn't have any recognition of this at all? And you know, it's just it's a, it's hard for them right now at this particular point. And there are little things that they can do. They can they can just shift things a little by the way they do something like they can suggest certain things and they can offer certain certain ways of doing things that that can lead us to that place but it, it is we're in that that transitional stage right now I think where women uh, are not able to give their full self that don't feel that they are able to give them full their full spiritual selves to their jobs and yet I think it's shifting and I think men are shifting as well I see that there that there are men who are starting to value the women's contributions and the bottom line is that women owned organizations are more profitable and do better than men owned or, or small businesses there's, there's statistics out there that prove this so women's management style also impacts the bottom line so that I, I have all faith that this will will be there will be more women expressing their leadership in businesses when they when that fact gets out into the general culture. Kathy at the alchemy gathering to occupy our sacred self will there be opportunities to experience um, this sisterhood um, paradigm shift or to address this or to model um, some of these elements that the participants can take back to the workforce and to their day-to-day um, -day lives? Yes. Um, we, we have designed this event very carefully and with a lot of collaborative input from different women representing different organizations, from with women who have different skill sets and one of the things that we have as a priority is to model different ways of doing dialogue different ways of doing listening um, and pointing out that modeling when it's happening so that we can say to women we've called them exclamation points um, where we can just say this is an example of something that you can do in the workplace or this is something that you can do with your family um, and this is something you can bring into your marital relationship um, these skills are life skills they're not just spiritual um, practices you, you called them spiritual strengths earlier and I think that's a beautiful phrase they're life skills that translate across multiple um, dimensions of women's lives and our coming together in San Francisco is going to be an opportunity to teach one another um, new skills and new practices and to, to constantly be reminding women note what you just saw because that's an example of a new way of doing things. You know, this broadcast is being recorded and presented during the International Day of the Girl Child mm -hmm. celebrations. You know, the UN General Assembly designated October 11th as the International Day of the Girl Child, and this second um, celebration of that is in the area of innovative education. And so it sounds to me that. In that context, what the work that the two of you are at the forefront of is a part of the education, innovative educational approach mm -hmm. to empowering girls, mm -hmm. that it's to embrace and not stymie ongoing spiritual development and recognition throughout life. Um, all of our life cycles and that this is a way of creating a new global culture as it relates to transformative leadership with women and girls as the leaders you know it, it, this is I think that the impact of what you're doing uh, is the will affect generations <laughs> you know the kind I really mm -hmm. do is mm -hmm. that that the hope <laughs> yes <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, we, we've had a strong component of young leaders involved with Women of Spirit and Faith from the beginning. And we are now watching those young leaders get married and get pregnant and begin families. And one of our young leaders is going to be bringing her son, who is currently, I don't know how old is Henry Emerson, I think a couple months, three months, mm -hmm. maybe. Mm -hmm. um, she's going to be bringing him to alchemy. Um, so we, we literally are watching this new generation um, come into this conversation, come into this sort of stream of possibilities. And it's a, it's a wonderful thing to see. In closing, I just want to thank both of you for the work that you're doing and that you're at the mm -hmm. forefront of this frontier. It remains a, a, a frontier. Um, <laughs> Absolutely. In, in, um, mm -hmm. And yes. there's so much potential. In, and this is such a wonderful period of time in history for us to live and do this work because mm -hmm. we have the freedom um, at least in our nation and we have the capability using technology to expand and reach out to others and to gather together uh, people who want to see transformative change and not at the expense of losing or disconnecting from our faith and our mm -hmm. spirituality that it this is the holistic um, component mm -hmm. to being transformative leaders yeah exactly any closing comments Kay to the audience especially well, just, in light of the International Day of the Girl Child uh, yeah that's so wonderful uh, I, I did read about that this morning and I thought oh that's great um, no what I one of the things I just would like to say is that in addition to the conversations that we will be having we will be having experiences that will help us embody those conversations for example movement uh, and dancing and singing and uh, art we're having some artwork so that, that because that engages the whole part of us so we're embodying what we learn as well as having conversations about what we learn and I do believe that the younger generation is uh, is ready for this and, and I'm so excited about the possibility that I see coming forth from our young leaders Thank you. Thank you, Kay. Thank you so yeah. much for being here with us today. How about you, Kathy? Any advice um, to our viewers? Well, I think I'd just like to share um, the invitation that Women of Spirit and Faith has been working with for four years. Mm -hmm. And it's the words that we open our book with. We published a book at the end of um, 2011 called Women, Spirituality, and Transformative Leadership where grace meets power. And we open that book with these words. As a woman of spirit and faith, you have something important. You know something important about this moment in human history. You know it from your rich experiences in the world, and you know it from a place of deep wisdom within. Your unique pattern of knowing is part of a larger pattern of feminine wisdom being called forth at this time in service of the earth and of humanity. Um, and I think it's just important for all women everywhere, for girls of any age, for young women, um, for all of us to remember um, that we each carry an important piece of the wisdom that is going to help us solve the puzzle of these times. Kathy Shafe, Kay Lindell, thank you so much for being You're here welcome. today on Sylvia Global and our global conversations. Again, uh, viewers, we'd love to have you participate in their upcoming alchemy. Um, gathering in San Francisco at the San Francisco Bay Sofitel um, Hotel. Is that the correct pronunciation, Kathy? Yeah, it's a Sofitel. Sofitel, and that's November 7th through 10th. And it is the Alchemy Occupy Your Sacred Space. Where can people go to register? Yeah, they can go to our website, www.womenofspiritandfaith.org. 
and there they'll find information not just about the alchemy gathering but about all of the other things that Women of Spirit and Faith does. We have a blog called The Divine Feminine where anyone can contribute. We have um, local circles. There are a variety of ways that women can get engaged in this community and come play with us. Come play with us. Have a wonderful day, ladies. Yeah. Thank you so much. I look forward to having you back on again after the gathering. Uh, wonderful. wonderful. All right. Thanks. Nice to meet you, Kate. Thank you, Gail. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.